All right then, so now we've dockerized a node application using Express, which is just a simple API that we can hit. And we've created an image and a container for that using Docker Compose. Next, I wanna show you how to dockerize a front-end application as well, namely a React one. And I wanna use Docker Compose for that as well. Now, you don't need to understand React to follow this lesson, but I'm not gonna pretend that knowing just a little bit about it won't help. So if you do wanna learn that first of all, feel free to check out my React tutorials. I'll leave the link to those down below the video. But again, you don't really need to understand React. Anyway, I've already got this React app here in the Docker Crash Course folder called My Blog. And by the way, you can download this React project from the course files on GitHub. And a link to that GitHub page is also below the video. But we have this React app and it's really simple. It's just basically one page, the root component itself, which lists a load of blog titles, nothing more. And the blog titles are at the minute being fetched from a dummy REST API called JSON Placeholder. And we can do this from containerized apps. We can reach out to the web to third party APIs and make requests to them. Anyway, that call brings us back a list of blog objects, which we then store inside this bit of state at the top. Then we can map through those blogs in the template and output the title property for each one. So a really, really simple React application. And now we want to dockerize that. So make an image for it and also get it running inside a container. And to do this, we need to do basically three things. First, we need to make a Docker file to say how the image should be built. Second, we need to make a Docker ignore file to tell Docker to ignore our node modules folder when building the image. And third, we need to edit our Docker compose file to add on this React project or service. So let's start by quickly adding the docker ignore file in the root of the React application, all right? So remember, it's called dot docker ignore. And then inside that file, we can just type node underscore modules, and that's gonna tell Docker to ignore that folder when we're making the image, all right? So next up, we wanna make the docker file as well for the app. So first of all, let's make that file called docker file with a capital D inside the root folder of the React application. And now we can start to add the different layers inside this file. So the first one is gonna be a parent image, which will be a node image, because although React isn't a node application as such, it needs to use node to build the application, all right? So let's say at the top, from in capitals node and then a colon to use the version and it's going to be 17 hyphen alpine and that means we're going to get version 17 of node built on top of the alpine distribution next we want to specify the work directory to be inside a subfolder on the image called app so we can just say for work forward slash app then we want to copy over the package.json file to the image before anything else so that we can run npm install in the next layer. And by just saying dot here, we're saying basically copy it to the root of the working directory, which is in the app folder, right? So next we can use the run instruction to run a command, which is going to be npm install. And this is going to install all the project dependencies listed in that package.json file. Then we need to copy the rest of the source files over. So let's do another copy instruction and then a dot to say this current directory where the Docker file is. So grab all of this and then place it in the same directory forward slash app that we're working in. All right, so that's the next one. Then we're gonna basically document that we're exposing a port number. Now React apps run on port 3000 by default. So that's the port the container is gonna expose. And finally, we need to give this a CMD instruction to run a command to start the app inside the container. And that command is npm start. This is gonna run the start script in the package.json file, right? Which then runs the React application. So remember, the value of this goes inside an array where each item in the array is a word of the command, right? So we have two items, we have npm and then start. So let's do that. And then that's pretty much it for the Docker file. So next up, we need to configure the Docker compose file to make an image for this React app and also to run a container for it too. So then inside the Docker compose file, we've already configured the API service, but now we need to add this extra React site or React service to this as well. 
So we do that by adding it as an extra service inside the services property. So it needs to be indented one level to match up vertically with the API service. Now I'm going to call this service my blog, which is the same name as the React app, but you can call it something else if you want. Some people might call this front end or React app or something else. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Inside that service, we need to specify the same things as the API up there. So we need the build property, which is going to be a path to the folder where our Docker file is kept for this service. Uh, we need the container name property to name this container as well. We need to list the ports that we want to map and then also any extra configuration that we might need as well. So let's start with the build property, which is just going to be dot forward slash my blog, because that's the path to the folder where the Docker file is kept for this service. All right. So next, let's add the container underscore name property to give this container a name. And then I want to call this my blog underscore C, which stands for container. All right. So then we need the ports property. And inside this, we can map port to port. So it's going to be 3000 to 3000. All right. And then if we want to visit this React app in the browser, all we have to do then is visit localhost port 3000. All right then. So after that, if we wanted to see the real time updates as we develop and save our files, we would then specify volumes much like we did with the API one, right? So I could just copy and paste the same instructions from above and then just change the API folder to be our my blog folder instead. Now, this is fine, right? But if you're working on Windows, this probably won't work because the way Docker works on Windows using WSL is a bit different. In some Windows versions, you can circumnavigate that by using a flag called Chokidar use polling. But in a lot of cases, that doesn't work as well either. So you can work around it by developing within the Linux subsystem on Windows itself. But I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole right now. So in my case, I'm just going to remove the volumes, but feel free to keep these if you want, if you're on a Mac or running Linux. Anyway, there's two more properties that we need to add onto this for React to work properly in the container. Now, the first one of those is the standard in open property. And we set that to be true. Right. So that's the first one we need. And the second one is going to be the TTY property, which we also set to be true as well. Now, adding both of these properties basically starts the container in interactive mode, which is what we should do with React apps in Docker. So that's the opposite of detached mode. And it means that our React container won't automatically shut down. And now that's pretty much it as far as this Docker Compose file is concerned. So next, I want to make it so that I can grab the data that we list in the React app, not from JSON placeholder, but instead from our API that we created our other service. And remember, we can reach that API from a browser using localhost port 4000, right? So all I really need to do is change this request, this endpoint to localhost port 4000 forward slash. And then that should reach out to our API container and get the data from that endpoint. And also we need to put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash here as well. And actually I'm just gonna delete this import at the top because we don't have an app.css. All right then, so hopefully now that should be fine. Now let's try running this in the terminal. So just come down here and type docker hyphen compose, then up and then hit enter. And again, it might take a little bit of time to do this, especially the first time around. But once it's done, we should be able to send requests not only to the API service in the browser using port 4000 on localhost, but also reach the React app on localhost as well using port 3000. And both of these projects are running independently of each other in separate containers. And that's typically how we work with Docker. Every service, whether it be a backend API, or some kind of front end site or a MongoDB database or something else, they would all have their own isolated containers, right? And that way they can all be run independently of each other. So now in a browser, if we visit localhost port 4000, first of all, to make sure the API is working, we can see it does because we get this JSON response. And then next we can go to localhost port 3000 to see if the React app is working. 
which again, it is awesome. We can see that app right here. And we can also see that we're grabbing the data from the API service, awesome. So now we've used Docker Compose to create two images and spin up two containers for different services the API service, and also our React app. Next up, I wanna show you how to share images on Docker Hub.